Hi, everybody. Welcome once again. My name is Dr. Grace Kakari, but I go by Dr. G. I am a success and wellness advocate. I love to talk about everything success and wellness. And today we are going to continue with our holistic wellness topic okay and specifically we are looking at financial wellness it's so exciting we all need to learn about financial wellness this is a topic i'm personally passionate about but know that if this is your first time joining us we've been looking at holistic wellness and the whole idea is that a balanced thriving life demands paying attention to several aspects of a person's life so we are not just going to choose to be good professionals and struggle financially and we are not going to choose to be good mummies at home and then we struggle in other areas of our life so we are exploring we are just exploring where and where do we have to pay attention to and how can we improve. So that is holistic wellness. And this has been our guide so far. And today we are exploring financial wellness with an expert. I am super excited to bring Mr. Douglas Aze. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. You can, see, you can see how excited I am. Eh? <laughs> how are you doing this morning? I'm doing wonderful yourself. Great, great, great. It's always great to be, you know, here to educate and work with some our African brothers and sisters and all the people that are going to tune in to learn about Finance 101, Life Insurance 101. That's I always a great you. topic, actually. I tell you, it's, it's exciting. Um, I would let you go ahead and then introduce yourself to our people. Who are you? What are you involved in? What do you do? So that when we see someone like, yeah, I know him. I know what he does. Yes. And then I'll go ahead and then we'll start our discussion for the day. Definitely. No problem. Well, folks, good morning and good afternoon for those of you in other parts of the world. My name is Douglas Aze. Um, been in the financial service industry for over 25 years where I work with different families and business owners, just helping them thrive and understanding the importance of finance 101, which is basically the basic of finance because you can't build wealth if you really don't understand the basic of finance. So I teach that. I help you understand it on, on a more lower level. In that way, you don't get it. It's not too complicated for you. And at the same time, I own a bunch of other businesses, you know, that I do as an entrepreneur. But my passion, my love is my financial foundation because when it's all said and done, you know, no matter how much money you make, if you don't understand the foundation, which is what well, the topic we're going to be talking about today, because a lot of folks, every time we talk about life insurance, especially my African brothers and sisters, whenever they talk about life insurance, they run away. They think it's about just dying. No, life insurance is not just about dying. It has a lot of benefits in it. And once you understand the benefit, man, you know, it's going to change your life. So we won't get more into that later. Mm, mm. Life insurance is not about dying. Please, you are scaring me already. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember um, watching your video there. I'm going to tell you the truth. Okay, Dragon Friends, I don't know. Where did I find this man? Okay, I was somewhere, my somewhere, thinking about my life and my innocent self. And then I saw this video, um, African Millionaires in America. I may get the name wrong, but I'm very yeah. similar to that. <laughs> Am I right? Yes. Oh, beautiful. And then I love the positive perspective the video brought, all the people featured in the video. You were three people and all the things you were doing. But what stood out to me when it comes to you was your willingness to share. Throughout your interactions, you were sharing. You know, you go to places, you share, you, you do so many other things to, to help people also understand the journey. And I thought that was awesome. It wasn't just about you. It wasn't just about me, me, want to make money. And then you have a book, yes. Creating Generational Wealth. And I had the image here to share with Thriving Friends, but somehow the image is hiding from my screen. So that is okay. So let's start off by talking about now wealth. Briefly, what is generational wealth? And then we'll go straight into the life insurance. Yeah, definitely. Generational wealth is that wealth that lives on forevermore. So when you think about people like Walt Disney, 
you know, a lot of people travel from all over the world to visit Disney World. Mm -hmm. And that's generational world. He's dead, he's gone, but his name continues to grow. His vision continues to grow even better. I mean, but can you imagine this guy started um, Disney World with just a hundred thousand dollars back in the day when he wanted to, when he had this vision. And just like a lot of us uh, entrepreneurs, a lot of times we have a vision, we have this great idea, but what stops us is finances. So when you think about generational wealth, I want you to think about a person like a Walt Disney that went to the bank to try to borrow money from the bank and the bank declined and said, nope, we cannot give you the money to start your vision because we don't believe in Mickey Mouse or any of those things. Mm -hmm. But that's what he did. He was able to tap into his life insurance, mm. cash value life insurance, and was able to take $100,000 from it, borrow against it, to start Walt Disney. Uh, and look at that company today. It's They control a lot of Florida. <laughs> it's like they have their own country inside of America. And um, they do a lot of great things. So... That's what generational wealth is. You and I are from Africa. We know a lot of wealthy families that when they die, the wealth mm -hmm. dies with them. Yeah. That name will continue. And we probably have a lot of wealthy families that are more even a lot more wealthier than Walt Disney. Yeah. Unfortunately, when they die, that wealth dies with them. Mm, so mm, mm. And that has to stop. That really has to stop. We need to do something about this, really. And then this is the book that I was trying to pull up and it was hiding from me. Life insurance. You said it's not about death. So if we are not dying, then what is life insurance? So, you know, life insurance is that insurance that you have to protect you. You know, what is your value? You know, a lot of times when we look at our lives, we a lot of times disrespect us as human beings. We disrespect ourselves mm. and we don't put a value to us. Now, when you think about you as a human being, you go out and you make income. Your family depends on your income coming in. So what happens if that income stops? How does the income stop? It's not just about debt. What if you get sick and you cannot work? You know, will your family continue the lifestyle with your wife, your children be able to go to that school that you've promised them that you were taking care of. Would they still be able to continue with that lifestyle? Mm -hmm. What if you die? Basically, what happens? So you got to protect yourself, your income. If something happens, that's what life insurance really is. It's for income protection, just like we protect our house. When we buy a house, we have insurance on the house. Mm -hmm. When we buy a car, we have insurance on the car. Mm -hmm. uh, some of us have, I know in Africa, it's very rare, but there's some countries that are offering it today. Health insurance, if we get sick, we want to be able to pay the hospital. But what happens when we die? The, at the end of the day, none of us are going to live forever. Yeah. We all know this. I mean, I, I realized that years ago when my brother died in a plane crash and he was a pastor. He died 19 years ago in a plane crash. He was going to go preach. I mean, you know, I'm like, where's the angels to protect that airplane if, as though he was going to go preach? And a lot of people passed away, even young children. So realizing that at the end of the day, none of us are going to live forever. The question now is, which is different between the wealthy people and everybody else. The wealthy understand they're going to die. And because they understand they're going to die, they start planning towards it. And they start using tools that will put a lot of cash back into the family. So I call life insurance a guaranteed lottery ticket. Okay. So if you play lottery, life insurance is a guaranteed lottery ticket that will pay out. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. I'm a little shaking like, Yeah. Death is actually not a bad thing. Just as we were born, we will die, right? We will transition. So it's actually not a bad thing. But, you know, in our culture, if you talk about death, then people start shaking a little bit. So, but do I really need life insurance if I don't have children? You know? Yeah, I mean, definitely you do. Because here's the deal, right? You know, who's going to be responsible for you if something happens at death? Who's going to bury you? Who are you... Who depends on you? Like I remember coming to America and 
you know, working and always sending money back to Nigeria, to my parents, to take mm -hmm. care of them, to make sure they're good, you know. But if something happens to me, they depend on me, right, to send them money. What if something happens to me at that point? That means that money stops. Mm -hmm. So insurance is that, I call it the final paycheck <laughs> that you send to the people. So, and for a single person or somebody with no kids, I was single, I didn't have no children, you know, back then. Um, but what, what made the difference was the fact that I can also use it as a savings account. Okay. So it wasn't just for the debt benefit. It was also used as a savings account for me to pack my money, knowing the money is protected. So it's a great thing. And later down the line, as I started having children and, and, and started becoming a, a, a full grown adult, guess what? I was able to use that money to pay for wedding, you know, start businesses. Because remember what I said earlier, if you might have a vision to start a business, but if you don't have money to do it, you can't. So because of me having my policy at a young age mm -hmm. and it grew with me, when I was ready to start a business, I was able to tap into that life insurance to start the business. Mm. Thank you so much. So um, you did talk about using it as a savings account as well. Since most of us are young on the younger side and then we probably don't have children or we are very early in life. So we think we have energy to work for the next 10, 20, 30, 50 years. Can you talk a little bit about how life insurance becomes a savings account? Because that may sound more appealing to us than the death part. Well, yeah, it, it should. So here's the deal, right? So for me, I look at myself as a as a real estate, you know, because I'm a house, right? I'm because and the government in America looks at you as a, a human being as a real estate, and that's why they have what they call estate taxes, <laughs> you know. So when it comes to life insurance, the first question I want to I, I ask myself: How much is my value? If something happens to me, what is the value? So I create a value. And how do you figure out the value? You use your, you use your income. So if you make $50,000 a year, then what the question you want to ask yourself is, okay, if something happens to me, how long do I want this $50,000 to continue until it stops? You could do 10 years, 15, 20 years. If let's say 10 years, then that means 50,000 times 10, that's 500,000. So that's the value. So now I'm going to go to an insurance company. That's okay. I got $500,000 value of my life. I want to get a policy that I can use like a bank. Now, how does that work? Well, when you look at real estate, if you put a value, you want to buy a house, the house is 500000 The bank is going to tell you your monthly payment, right? Which yeah. is a monthly mortgage. I know some of us in Africa, we don't do all that because we pay cash. I get it. You know, mm -hmm. in, in, the, in, the, in the first world, you have credit. So when they gave you the value, the house is 500000 The bank might say, okay, based on the house being $500,000, it's going to cost you $1,000 a month. So you're going to have a 30-year mortgage. You're going to pay $1,000 every month for 30 years using that number. But here's the deal. All that $1,000 doesn't go to the bank. Okay. What they do is... $500 of that money goes to the interest, which is the bank's money. Oh, the other $500 goes towards the principal to reduce how much you owe and also give you equity. The okay. second option you have is to make extra payment to your mortgage. So if you make an extra $1,000 payment, that's now $1,500 that's going towards the principal to reduce that $500,000 loan that you took out from the bank and then also gives you a $1,500 equity. Your 500 still goes to the interest. So that's 2000 that you're giving to the bank. Now, let's flip that to life insurance. Okay. Same example. The $1,000, the same thing, $500 will go to the insurance company. The other $500 will go towards the interest okay. bearing okay. account inside of the life insurance company. So they pay you interest. That's what they call cash value. And then if you make extra payment into that, that 1500 will also go towards the interest bearing account that pays you interest it could be four percent it depends on how the policy is designed and what your goal is you start building cash value which is called equity in your policy so that makes a big difference and that's how you start building that savings in the life insurance policy 
I see. Wow. Okay. Okay. So I guess that is just an overview. We can just talk about everything. So if you need more information, please reach out and learn more. But let's just scratch the surfaces. There are different types of um, life insurance out there. I know people who have strong feelings about something called termed life insurance. And then I've heard something like permanent or universal life. Can you hit a little bit on these for us? Yeah, definitely. So term insurance, nothing wrong with it. Again, you got to look at life insurance like a house and renting an apartment or renting a house. So with term insurance, you like, okay, I still want to protect my family. So for example, let's say you cannot afford to pay that thousand dollars a month for that $500,000 policy where you have a second option. You could just do what they call strip down policy and just get a term policy without anything. So that term will be the $500, right? The $500 a month. Instead of you paying a thousand, it could be $500. I'm just using that as an example. So that 500 goes straight to the insurance company. It doesn't go to you. You don't build no cash. It's like when you're renting in a house, the money you pay for rent goes to the landlord. He collects the money. He builds the equity in the house that belongs to him. In this case, the insurance company is getting your $500 and they're taking it and they're investing it and making more money because they do a check on you to see, okay, based on your age and your lifestyle, and your mortality checking, because they have actuaries. These are scientists, mathematicians that understand human life. And they've checked you out to see how many more years you have to live. And then they give you a number and say, okay, pay this amount. Basically, when you buy term insurance, there's, again, nothing wrong with it, because you need coverage. So you could have the coverage. But here's okay. the deal. If you have the option to either rent or own a house, and build equity, and you can afford to do either one, which one would you do? So yeah, here's yeah. what I say. If you can do either one, then it makes a lot more sense to own a life policy that you build equity in. That, helps. Huh. that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Thank you so much. So there is a question that I think I would even want to know okay. um, myself, and I'm going to show that on the screen, if only it's going to show. How does the insurance company know when somebody dies? <laughs> Man, the insurance company, they know everything. They are, there's, so there's a, there's, a, there's a third party that tracks and sees. When you cough, they know what's going on. Hey, <laughs> that's scary. <laughs> so they know. So what happens is this. So here's the deal, right? Just to you know help everyone understand with insurance companies because they're taking risk. They are uh, They they want to make sure because think if you paying five hundred dollars a month for five hundred thousand dollar policy, and you die the next day. And you only pay five hundred dollars. The insurance company has to pay out five hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot of money to pay to pay to somebody that only paid five hundred dollars or even a hundred dollars, depending on your yeah. age, right? So that's a lot of money. So they have to be able to figure out and know when somebody passed away. So here's what happens: when everyone in America, this is because this is the country I'm very familiar with the laws here, so I know when everyone in America dies. Mm -hmm. A family, you know, have to go file a debt claim and say we die. Because insurance company, first of all, cannot just agree that, oh, yeah, you died just because you called them. No, you have to file a debt claim. And as soon as you file that debt claim, it goes to a database. And everyone is notified that have a vested interest in your life. For example, the government, of course, they have a vested interest because now they want to know, can we collect estate taxes? You know, believe it or not, there's a lot of, there's some people that are paid money every day here in America that all they do is go online and put in your social security number to see if there's a debt claim filed on your life. Oh. Because the government want to make sure they collect estate taxes based on your life. And most people don't realize when we die here in America, what happens, your family still got to file the final tax return. 
They still got far taxes. A lot of people don't know that. And if you're not properly protected, everything you have goes to what they call probate court, which is another conversation because a lot of us Africans that come to America, some of us don't have a will. We don't have a trust. We don't have any of this. We don't even have those conversations because we don't want to talk about debt. But then you work hard. You Some of you are doing two jobs, three jobs, and then you die. The government says, thank you very much. Congratulations, you're dead. <laughs> your money. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, I get the concept. Yeah, I do get it. I thought, I don't know where I heard that from, but in my head, I thought when you die, everything ends. If you are owing people, if you're owing the bank, your debt cancels. So I've been thinking of maybe I should borrow and buy good stuff. And when I die, it cancels. So hmm. it doesn't cancel. Somebody has no. to pay. Somebody <laughs> So somebody's already thought of those things. So when somebody okay. dies, so here's the deal, right? When a person dies, there's some called probate court. Okay. So okay. since most people don't even have a simple will, even if they have a will, everything still goes to probate court. Okay. But let's okay. just assume they didn't even have that, right? And they go to court. They go to probate court. The children go to probate court because everything goes to probate. You can't even go get money from your parents' bank account. You have to go to court and the okay. court will have to issue something that you could take back to the bank to go claim whatever money is in there. You can get the house your parents left for you. You have to go to the court for the court to say, okay, here's the document. So what happens is before the money goes to the families, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. lawyer got to get paid. So he's in line. All the creditors have to get paid. So they're mm -hmm. number two in line. I can get paid if I say, oh, Grace, Dr. G, she owed me money because we did this, you know, this uh, LinkedIn stream yard vision. <laughs> I get in line. Everybody raise up their hand and get in line before the okay. children and the family gets anything. They're the last to get anything. I see. I see. <laughs> but wow. here's the deal. Okay. Life insurance is the only vehicle that does not show up in probate court. Okay. It's private. And whoever you put down as the beneficiary is who is going to get the money. Mm. No problem. I actually had a question about that, but um, some questions came in. I want us to get that out of the way, then yeah. we'll finish off with my question. Are there any tax implications associated with my life insurance policy? And then can I make changes to my life insurance policy after I have, I have purchased, yeah? That's a very beautiful question because at the end of the day, life insurance is one of the only tools that the government say, you know what, you could pay out. So let me give you a history about life insurance real quick. Okay. So life insurance in America has been around since the 1800s. It came from Europe, mm -hmm. you know, and... They started the insurance. Of course, America, you know how it is, the way the American system, we do things different. We don't like to follow the crowd. The crowd follows America. That's why I love being <laughs> <laughs> You know, they change everything. They change up the game. They change the English language. They're like, you know what, British, go keep your stuff. We're going to speak the way we want to speak. And yep. these guys, they came from Britain. Remember, the guys that, that found America came from United Kingdom, and they got rid of all the whatever it is the UK was doing. They changed everything. So when life insurance came into America, only husbands were buying life insurance because husbands were the one working. The mm -hmm. wives weren't working. They were home taking care of the children and all the other stuff and handling the family. The husband goes out and hustle. Some of them are snake oil salesmen. Um, salesmen. They come home, and then when they die, they have all this debt. They owe a lot of money to a lot of people. But what happened? The debtors will go in and take everything from the wife, take the house, take everything. Yeah. The insurance yeah. company went to Congress and said, please, this poor widow, can you stop? Can we stop the creditors from touching this money? Because it's for this poor widow. This is the only thing the husband has left her. And Congress thought about it, you know, and said, okay, you know what? We're going to pass a law and we're going to grandfather that law that nobody can touch money in life insurance. And also, it became a tax benefit for the wealthy because at the end of the day, you buy life insurance, the government cannot tax the money when you die. 
So okay. you could leave your families millions of dollars. And guess what? It's tax free when you pass away. And because okay. it's life insurance, when you borrow from it, and also the government passed the law that says anytime you borrow money from anybody, it's tax free because you're paying interest. So insurance company decided, you know what? What if we're gonna use that and loan people money? So they don't have to pay taxes. So the wealthy started buying a lot of life insurance to use it as a place to pack their money so they don't have to pay taxes on the interest that they're earning while they're looking for investment opportunities okay, to make okay. more money. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So that's what you people have been doing, man. <laughs> okay. So we are coming. We will also be wealthy. Don't worry. So here is a lovely comment for you. First time hearing these nuggets about life insurance, which is great. We want you to hear about it. We want you to learn about it and look into it. So um, let's talk quickly about the beneficiaries because we'll be getting off offline soon. Who should be? Who should I include? <laughs> Whoever you want. That's a beautiful thing about life insurance. You could make anyone your beneficiary. Whoever you want can be a beneficiary to your life insurance policy. Okay. You know, you, I mean, there's people that leave money to their dogs, you know. <laughs> yeah, my next see my next question. <laughs> oh, are you serious? Like you leave money to your dog, like the animal? How people would the animal spend the money? Please send it to me. Then they could, then of course, the way it's set up is set up through a trust and then the trust will hire, you know, a person that's going to come in and take care of the dog, feed the dog, make sure the dog stays clean. I'm just using that as an example. You know, because there's a lot of folks that they don't have anyone and they leave some more money to charity, of course, but they leave a certain amount of money to whatever they want, especially if they don't have any children. Now, there's some people that actually can't sell their life insurance. There's stuff like that. A lot of people don't even know that. See, there's a lot of older people that don't have any need for the insurance anymore. They could actually sell it if they don't have a need for it. They could mm. sell it just like you sell real estate. You could sell your life insurance policy. But that's another conversation. That's a totally different yeah. aspect when it comes to investment. So, but yeah, anyone could be a beneficiary. It's a good way to leave money for someone privately. So if you don't want your children fighting, you know, you have three children, you want to give one 30,000, you want to give one 50,000, you want to give one 100, sure, you can sure. do that privately and nobody can, they, each other don't know unless they tell each other that, mm -hmm. hey, I got this amount. But if they don't want to tell anyone, if you tell them, listen, I'm giving you this money. You don't have to say nothing to nobody because the insurance company will never reveal how much you got. They'll never tell. Okay. So I saw a video on social media and it was a guy who had just gone to buy a $1 million policy and he lives with his girlfriend. They've been together for four years, but they are not married. And the guy decided not to put the girlfriend on the life insurance policy. And the girl was very upset that he wouldn't put her on because she's been like his wife. We are not married, but we live together. I cook for you. I clean for you and all that. And then I saw the divided conversation online. So if you are not married to somebody, what are the implications? And if you decide to put the person on, the guy's reason was, I don't want to put you on. I die. And then you take the money and go and marry somebody else and spend the money. Yeah, great. You know, so can you always you know, remove somebody from it? Can yes, you make you can, changes? Yeah. You can always make changes and remove people from it. But here's the deal. You know, what I would tell that woman right there is that dude does not love you. So get oh. away from it. <laughs> okay. so that simple. You can't expect me to, especially for a woman, she's cooking, she's taking care of the house, she's doing all this. And this selfish man doesn't want to, he buys life insurance and he puts somebody else as the okay. beneficiary that's so sad that's very very that's a person that doesn't love the woman's way and then for the families people that are married because there's still some married men that don't do the same thing they don't want to put their wife as beneficiary because they're scared well if you're scared stop eating her food then if you, think, <laughs> you know stop eating the food you know stop sleeping with her i mean don't do nothing just you know, so let her go and the woman if you're smart get away from that guy quickly yeah. yeah. 
So how do you convince your husband to buy a life insurance? <laughs> well, you know what? You, you don't really have to convince someone to purchase something to protect his family. Okay. If you okay. say you love your family, and it's not even just about the wife, but what about kids? Mm. If you have to, are you saying as long as you live as a man? So I, I'll break, let me even go back this way, right? Because I've, I've been doing this 25 years, so I've met all kinds of res, um, re, um, resistance from different people, even women sometimes that say, I don't want to leave anything for my children that I didn't have anything. So they don't want to buy life insurance. Yeah. Well, here's the deal, right? When we die, because it's going to happen, yeah. the question now is, you got to figure out everything that you are doing. So for me as a human, right? I mean, I'm a human. What is my value to my family? Right now, I take care of the family. I, I send money home. I do all these things. I make sure the, the grass is cut, right? I, I pay somebody for that. I make sure the house is clean. I pay for that. I, I make sure the kids can go to school. I pay for that. So what happens when I stop, when all that money stops? Who's going to come cut the grass? Who is going to come take care of the house? Who's going to pay for the school? Because they're not going to just take it based on smile. They need money to pay for the private school if that's what you want to, that you're sending your kids to. They're yeah. used to Even yeah. if you send them to public school. But they have to get there. They have to buy um, books. They got to do all these things. At the end of the day, who's going to do all that? Because now my income stopped. Life insurance is a love product. It's a love product. Like for me, I have a love letter that I've written to all my kids inside my life insurance policy. And I, you know, I, I tell them exactly what it does. And every time I, that letter, I, I change it every year and I explain to them why that this policy was taken out. Mm -hmm. Now I'm dead and gone, but I want them to read it before they, you know, before they start receiving all this money, they need to understand the power of what I've done. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm all trusted up, so I have a trust and all the other stuff that will make sure everything is going to be done the way I want it done. So yeah. I'm controlling everything from the grave. That's wonderful. We need to talk about trust sometime because confession, I don't have any trust. But I'm learning, you know, it's a learning process. You learn about it. And then the will, the will thing. I've seen so many families break down because there was no will. So we have to also look into wills at some point. Okay, did you have anything from your end you wanted to share with us that we haven't touched on? No, just, you know, the, the fact that at the end of the day, when it comes to protecting our loved ones, right, we have to understand that you know, we have to put value on our life. We're very valuable and we got to make sure that no matter what, you know, don't worry about, you know, what they're going to do with the money and all this stuff because we can't control it. Even with me having a trust, I still can't control what my successor trustee is going to do, right? So the most important thing that we should be doing is educating our children from the get-go the importance of finance start teaching financial education, having financial wealth meetings at the house. Talk about it. Stop hiding money. Especially a lot of us Africans that come to America, what do we do? The first thing we start doing is start building properties back home. Nothing wrong with that, but you know what? Get your foundation right because when it's all said and done, the key question is the people you're leaving stuff to, how, what do they know about finance? Do they even understand how to balance a checkbook, right? You're leaving them all this money. What are they going to do? Or you're leaving them all this property. What are they going to do with it? Did you ever talk to them about how money works? They have to understand the importance of finance or they're going to blow everything. And then you got to also remember, don't get emotionally attached to certain things or even to, to say, oh, you know, I got to make sure this happens or my kids do this you got to be very very clear because your family is a business let me say that again your family is a business the husband if you have a, a married couple the husband the president the wife the vice president of the family business the children are the employees of the family business if you're a single woman 
you're the president and the vice president of your family business. If you have kids, your children are your employees. So when that is the case, when you start looking at it that way, how much insurance do you have on your key employees? Which means everybody in the family have to have insurance. Your children have to have life insurance. Your wife has to have life insurance. Your husband has to have life insurance. Just in case something happens, there has to be money that comes back into the family to continue the family business. Okay. Okay. Wow. Sounds wonderful. Thank you so, so much. I want to know if you can have more than one life insurance policies from different companies. I mean, you, you could have more than, yes, you can. And, um, but it depends on how you get it. Like, you know, there's, there's a lot, you could use it for different things. So yes, the answer is yes, you can. And you don't have to have it from different companies. You know, it could be one company. It could be, you know, it just depends on what it is you're looking for. Don't just go out and get policies just for the sake of it. You have to make sure you understand what, a, you know, life insurance is a financial tool. So just like mutual funds, just like annuities, just like um, um, bank accounts, savings account, checking account. The question you have to understand when you're getting a financial tool is how does it work? Does it meet my goals? What is it that I'm looking to do? You don't just go buy it. It's just, you know, just be for the sake of buying it. You need to understand how to use it to benefit you, your family, yourself. So it's very important to understand it's a financial product. So you have to understand how it works. Don't just buy it just because somebody said to get it. You have to understand how it works. That's one thing that we do is we make sure our clients understand how, why they're buying this. We're not calling it, it's not an investment. It's just a place to pack money. And if you just, if you can afford it as a, as a, as a savings, then you get it as a protection, just to protect in case of debt. And that's fine too. There is another comment on Facebook. What is the difference between life insurance provided by companies and private ones bought in a bank, for example? Good, man. That's a great question. So you got to look at companies as this, right? For example, if you're looking to um, buy breakfast, right, in the morning, you want to get breakfast. There's two companies that's going to sell you this breakfast. One company, all they do every day, from morning after the night, they make breakfast food. That's all they do. You okay. get pancakes, you get eggs, you get whatever you want that is breakfast. You get any time of the day. Then there's another company that's like, oh, we're going to offer breakfast as well to all the other food that we offer. But we're only doing breakfast in the morning. That's it. You know, that's all we do. But we're not doing full menu of breakfast. We, you know, you could, there's limited menu. They just put a, about four different menu uh, designs in there. And that's it. Which one would you go to? Would you go to yeah. a company that offers, give you four options? Or would you go to a company that gives you a plethora of options? Which one would you pick? So buying life insurance from a bank is like that company that just decides to add life insurance to their menu. Or you could go to a company that all they sell is life insurance. That's all they do. So I wouldn't advise getting life insurance from a bank. That's not where you want to buy life insurance from. You want to get a very, very, a, an agent that understands insurance, that can break it down, explain everything to you, and that makes and make sure that they serve you based on your goal, hmm. what it is you're looking to accomplish. Don't just do it just because you want to do them a favor. Do it because they are helping you put some together that's going to benefit you and your family. That is wonderful. Thank you. Um, let me mention that uh, Mr. Douglas Aza is on LinkedIn, is on Twitter, is on Instagram. Please follow him. He's always posting short videos. So some of these questions may be answered there for all you know. And then he's dedicated to helping the African communities thrive. You know, so um, he has a company. Is the company called Lago? La How would you say? Lago, L A R G O. Lago Financial Services. Yeah. So you could, and you could just if you put my name on 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 Google, you pull up, you know, Douglas Aze, and uh, you'll be able to see all my 
social media everywhere I'm at. And get the book, Creating Generation Wealth. It's a great book. I kind of educate a lot on different topics to help you start thinking, get your mind thinking about creating that generational wealth and living the money to the generation to come. Mm. Because at the end of the day, when we go, we want to be able to have live a legacy for our children's children. So they kind of remember the name and keep the name going. Because at the end of the day, listen, you know, when you have money, it kind of makes a difference on how people follow you. Because people decide to either keep your name or toss the name. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you so much for coming. And I can see that the Thriving Friends are really enjoying this. Wherever you are, please type Douglas Aze into your browser and follow him right away. As you do that, also follow me. What, what have I done wrong? And uh, Follow me and then share my content and then like, let people see the great work we are doing and let's thrive together. Do you have any final words for um, our people? Anything you want to live with us before we say goodbye? No, just, um, you know, continue thriving. At, at the end of the day, there's no um, easy way to build wealth. It's all about taking the time and be patient. You know, patience is the key, but continue to scale in your mindset. Keep adding more knowledge to your brain cell. You know, there's no such thing as wasted knowledge. And surround yourself with people that are looking to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, you just have people that are just comfortable in where they're at and, and you're not comfortable where you're at, find a new circle. If you're the smartest person in your circle, find someone else. Get a different circle where you can learn. We are constantly learning. If people are not feeding you with food of knowledge, then you need to find other people. And you could go on social media today, on YouTube, and learn, you know, the world is smaller today based on the social media, right? So we could get a lot of information. And then if you find someone that you uh, that appeals to you, then support them in whatever platform that they have. Don't just go steal the information and walk away. Like, if I go to somebody's page and I like the content that they're sharing on their page for free, guess what I do? Very simple. I click so I, I click like, share, and I subscribe to their page. Because if I cannot pay them with dollars, guess what? Let the entity that they're sitting on, whatever platform, let them pay them for me. Mm -hmm. So I'll subscribe and I'll share their page. You know, a lot of times people go and they steal people's information. They watch their videos or whatever, and they don't share it. They don't subscribe to them. But then they're using their content to go make money and never send that person a penny. So don't do that. Don't do Share that. Their page, subscribe to their page and like it. And let's think about thriving holistically. Okay. Don't neglect any aspect of your life. And we can make it. We can do it. Let's go ahead and do it. And please, my takeaway from this is think about your life. Think about your family and leave a legacy for everybody. We appreciate you and keep thriving.